the prevalence of crime has increased pretty noticeably. Yeah, and, and like I said, New York was pre-pandemic the safest city i thought in the world i grew up there i was like it's so safe it's insane and i always would say the same thing about new york i would say new york is the only city that like any time of the day any day of the week you feel like the vibrance you feel the people where i would go to a city like even though i love it like a city like cleveland cleveland would feel even though it's open it felt closed like that's just what the city always mm. felt like and I, I was like i never felt that once in new york but now over the last like year or two new york a lot of times, like 50% of the week feels closed even though it's open. And I'm like, oh, snap. It hit New York, which I – and then, you know, I talked to my father about that, you know, complain about New York. He was like, Chris, shut up. He's like, I grew up in New York in the 70s and 80s. Like, it is nowhere near as violent and unsafe as it was in the 70s and 80s. Like, you just grew up in peacetime. He was like, you know, you grew up in peacetime America. Your generation are all peace kids. You are born in the eye of the storm. Yeah, he's like, so you didn't see any of this shit. Yeah. He was like, so you, what, you, you just had the privilege of growing up in a New York City and in America that was at, at the top, you were at the top of the Roman Empire. He was like, and now what you're seeing is kind of a little bit more of the fabric society. He was like, I, my dad's like, I grew up in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. This is just reminding me of old New York. He's like, I kind of like this grittiness of this, but you grew up, everybody's safe. That was never going to be real. He was like, and you know, I don't, it will probably come back at some point, but it's going to take a long, long time. But I don't know. I feel like now, like in my, you know, when, when I'm, even like my mom wants to take my daughter to Times Square to the American Girl doll store, and I just, I couldn't believe it. I was like, no, I, I, I can't, I can't allow you to take her. She's like, what? It's, it's, I'm your mom, your granddaughter. We'll take, we'll go on the train and I'll take her to the store and I'll be back. I was like, no, I can't, I, I won't be able to function. My anxiety won't be able to function of thinking about you and my daughter on the train. Cause if there's a homeless person down there, that's crazy off his meds and he throws one of you in front of the tracks and something happens, I won't be able to live with myself. Oh, and those thoughts Christ. were never in my head ever. They were never, ever, ever in my head, but now they are. And I don't know if it's because it's reality, the media, something, I, 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 I don't know what it is. I think it's a little bit of both. It is reality. It has happened. Yeah. So to deny that it's happened would be, that, that's ridiculous. Yeah. We, there's videos of people doing it. Right. The question is, like, how many of them, how much do you need to worry about it? Yeah. And, and how often is this happening? It's not happening that often when you consider how many people there are. But the fact that it could be a possibility at all. Right. The, you know, what's really crazy is, like, Giuliani cleaned New York City up. He did. He really did. He I mean, did. it was, a lot of people said it was, like, great overreach and thuggish behavior by yep. the police and all the horrible shit they did, the stop and frisk shit. Yeah. What would they do? They would just stop you? Any so, a anybody, so I had a friend who's, he's now a detective. He was a beat cop, 21 years old, when Giuliani implemented this stop and frisk thing. And he said, look. He was like, I, I'm being honest. My friend, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's Latino guy. He's like, I promise you, our sergeant would come in every morning, talk to us about stop and frisk, and he said, you stop each race, ethnicity, religion, you stop everybody equally, okay? He said, that's what you're looking for. You're everything is equal, okay? He said, but his beat was Times Square. He said, now, if I went in to Times Square and I grab a group of kids, pat them down, they have something, right? But they're you know, uh, uh, from a socioeconomic status that, you know, is a little impoverished, whatever, what am I supposed to do? Say, oh, you have a gun and a knife and drugs on you, um, but, uh, you know, I can't, I, I, I'm not going to take this off you. I'm just going to let you go back out into society. He said, no, I would have to then arrest them. He said, well, then I would take like another group of kids that wouldn't have anything and then you let them go. He said, and then that became like they brought race and identity politics into that type of policing. But we were stopping everybody equally. It's just crime is in certain areas for certain reasons. He was like, that's above my pay grade. He said, but when they stopped that stop and frisk, he said, the reason, the thing what's happening, at least in New York now, he said, it's, it's we'll know that uh, somebody has a gun or a weapon. We'll know that they're a career criminal. We know. He said, but we are not allowed to, to intervene at all unless they commit, unless they act first. He said, so that creates a lot of um, confidence for the criminal and it creates a lot of, you know, we're, we are scared. He was like, flat out, I'm scared to apprehend someone because the police union, if I make a mistake or if it looks like I made a mistake, is not going to have my back and I'm going to get sued and lose my family and lose my life. So you start to say, well, just, we know you have shit, but just deal with it. Unless you're raping, murdering someone, then I'll intervene. But that little petty shit, I'm not going to get involved in anymore. Well, I think we could look at it both ways, right? Right. And this is one way could look at it. The old way of uh, stopping and frisking is easy to abuse. Of course. 
And when you think about the power that you give someone, where they could just walk up to anyone, yeah, some businessman they don't like, some some fucking yeah. guy who thinks he's hot shit, some guy who's with his friends who's a little too loud, you just walk up to him and go, "Come on, take, let me see all your shit. I'm going to touch you in front of everybody, make you feel uncomfortable." Like, what? What? Shouldn't you have to commit a crime? Yes. Before the police are allowed to frisk you and take your stuff shouldn't right. you at least be accused of a crime Shouldn't there at least be some sort of criminal behavior where the police have to intervene because it, then they're like people are gonna Self-correct and you're gonna act differently in order to try to, to stop the cops from doing this to you Right like you, you you gotta that that's like a freedom issue That's a real egregious attack on freedom to just be able to point at someone right. and be able to just frisk them No crime no nothing right like that's a weird power yes. to give police and it's that's not good and The other thing's not good either. It's yeah. not good to take away all their power either. It's yeah. not good to to uh, make it so the cops are terrified to respond to a call. That's not good either. So there needs to be some sort of a logical recognition of what the issues are. Yeah. And right now, I don't think that's happening. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I mean, you know, a guy, a guy lives with me, my, my girlfriend's uncle, transgender guy, T.T. Jerry, 20 years in prison. Jerry, Shout out to T.T. Shout out T.T. Jerry's lived a fucking wild life. On your podcast all the time. On my podcast all the time. 